Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. Let's dive back into our package versus nuke challenge. So we've got a bunch of things to discuss. I'm going to be starting to zip through these things faster like I would do them if I wasn't talking. I'm going to really try to make sure I explain what I'm doing as I'm going through them. But now that we have five different colonies that are pretty far along, it's, it's just getting harder and harder to keep the video short and explain everything. Um, Basically, when you see my inspections and in the, in the videos, though, that's pretty much all I do. I, when I get into my hives, I don't go through every frame. There's no need to, and it's real invasive. Sorry about the wind, but we have a thunderstorm moving through. That's another thing. When you are like us and you have hundreds of colonies to go through, you do not get to pick what kind of weather that you get to go through your colonies. You just have to get it done regardless. And there's been times we've done stuff with rain hitting us, and the bees really appreciate those days. All right, so our nukes over there, you can see there's a little bit of robbing going on. Our season is, we got a little trickle of stuff coming in, but it's, it's gonna end pretty soon. So this is where you can create robbing screens. I don't use those, one, because it's an extra piece of equipment that I have to use for all of my colonies, and that's too big of an expense. It's too much work, and it's unnecessary, in my opinion. What you can do is reduce the entrance down a bit, um, you know, the main thing with anything, small hive beetles, wax moths, robbing from other bees, yellow jackets, all those things, is a strong, healthy colony. That's the most important thing for most anything. The only weakness, uh, in my opinion, that is really common that strong, healthy colonies succumb to is mites and the viruses that they carry. So let's get into the packages really quick. And then we're going to compare them to the nukes, which I peeked into them the other day and just popped the lids to see how they were drawing the combs with the sweet clover flow. And it's just amazing the difference. Like I said in our giveaway video, they were about the same exact size when we installed the nukes. These had already started uh, growing pretty well, and they were all about five, six frames of bees. Um, and of course, those were five frames over there, and they just those are really starting to get ahead of these guys and it's not because we've done anything differently I, I firmly believe it's because the queens are better mated than what you get in packages I really feel that's the number one reason why packages and a lot of nukes don't do super good for folks is not because they don't have the potential um, with the amount of bees that you get it's just the lack of a good well mated queen and uh, a lot of nucleus colonies out there that are sold come from the same stock the packages do because a lot of the guys will make their splits and they'll order queens from the commercial operations and plug in just a, a package type queen in there. So you end up with the same quality. It's really hard to sometimes source good bees and if you can find that, then you're in good shape. All right, let's get in. D dive in. All right, so let's start on this right one over here. So just looking up here at the top, we've got one, two, three-ish frames drawn. Now the weather's not super cooperative today, so the bees are probably a little hotter than normal. And plus they're getting bigger. That's one thing, there's these guys that always are talking about how gentle their bees are. And I see their, the size of their colonies, and I'm like, well, yeah, these, those things are babies. No wonder they're so easy to work with. I don't consider this a huge hive right here. This is kind of a, uh, this is still on the smallish size, maybe medium. All right, so they're, they're just kind of putting a little wax on that. It's really not that good. And we're fixing to end our flow entirely. You know, they're putting a little wax on that, which is okay. And this is the one we brought up to help entice them, and it, they filled it up. It's fat. The queen's been laying eggs in it again. I think, yeah, that's mostly honey, though. Probably sweet clover. So we're going to probably move that around, because you can see how fat that comb got. I guess I need to talk about that. So... When the bees don't draw the adjacent foundations quickly, they'll fatten out the honey areas. And then uh, you end up with uh, you know really fat combs, obviously, and they don't want to fit in uh, with the other ones. So that happens. Uh, it's just, 
I have found, now I don't have the scientific data to prove it to you guys, but it's my belief that healthy colonies, of course, with low mite levels that aren't experiencing stress and have a good quality mated queen. Now there is some research on a good genetic diversity. Those colonies draw out a comb better than colonies that are less diverse in their genetics. So that plays a role, but just healthy bees um, with good genetic diversity draw combs better. And I just think that these packages, something's up with the queens. They're just not mated as good. There's no reason why they should be this slow. And they're just, they're losing ground with the nucleus colonies. It doesn't mean these colonies are necessarily gonna die. One thing that I ex have experienced in the past is packages supersede their queens very quickly and one or two of these might be superseding right now and that might be why they're kind of lulling behind. When we started our business several years ago we purchased uh, almost 150 packages in addition to what we had and I knew it was going to be rough but it really shocked me how many of the colonies superseded within the first couple months and then especially once our flow ended, which is a very common time when you go from a strong flow to um, a dearth period, the bees a lot of times uh, like to supersede at that point. I think it's partially due to a lack of pheromone on the queen's part and just the way the incoming nectar and just all that kind of correlates together. But they superseded a bunch and then there was um, probably about, I don't know, about 10% of the colonies that they kept their queen, but they could just not grow past the deep. They couldn't hardly even get to a deep and the queen looked big and healthy, the mite levels were low, all of those things, there was no sign of disease. She just had terrible brood because she wasn't mated well. All right. Wow, okay, so they're back filling down in here. That, that shouldn't be like that in this middle frame. I'm not seeing any eggs in here, why is that? The good queen would be filling that up. They haven't drawn out this frame. All right, we got a little bit of brood on this side. They haven't drawn it out all the way. Yeah, this, this queen is just, and you know, the thing of it is she might be laying a ton. And I think this happens a lot where the queen actually is laying a bunch but they're cannibalizing some of the brood because it's a two inbred and bees will do that. If the, if the brood is two inbred, they will cannibalize it. So not only do we have a bunch of undrawn stuff in the top box, we have a bunch of undrawn frames in the bottom. So, all right, we have capped brood in here, but it's all old stuff. There's no young stuff in there. And, uh, and that, this frame over here is probably going to be the same way. This is why you have to, in my opinion, take control. You have to find somebody who will produce good queens for yourself. You have to take control of raising queens for yourself if you want to have true sustainability. Yeah, it's just nectar. As soon as they're, that, that brood's hatching out, they're going into the nectar. Now see, normally I'd be done with a colony like this if it was healthy and good. But there, this one is not growing like it should. Alright, there's eggs and brood in there. They have plenty of honey, that's obvious. Now one thing I'm not seeing a lot of is pollen. Not seeing a whole lot of bee bread, so they're living probably from day to day on their pollen so that's going to lower the amount of brood that they make however i'm seeing other colonies that are this size do just fine now that's a good frame of brood right there mm, it's kind of mixed around a little bit stick that over here now this one looks pretty good i still don't quite understand why they haven't drawn more combs that's better Hmm. Well, there's this colony right there. Oh, there's the queen over there. Way down there in the bottom. Let's go ahead and yank her out. 
I wouldn't su surprise me if some of these started superseding. Yeah, there she is towards the bottom. Have to really watch that putting it back in. Let's see. Let's get her off that bottom. Get out of there. All right, she's up on this side now, so we'll stick that one right back where it was. And we'll stick these not yet completed frames. in between the brood. All right, so that's, I mean, this colony is okay, but we're fixing to come into our dearth period. They're not gonna really wanna draw a whole lot of comb. We'll have to feed them really hard, but they should have already drawn more comb by now. The queen should be laying more brood than that at this point. They're backfilling too much comb space with uh, honey instead of drawing it out. Because this box is almost empty up here. All right. Tell you what, let's go to a nuke next. Big old fat comb right there. Big old fatty. Yeah, we'll have to watch this one. See, here's the thing. If, if that queen just keeps kind of the status quo and they don't try to supersede themselves, then we need to take some action because there is no reason that a good queen shouldn't be able to draw two deep boxes in our season. Goodness, my biggest colonies that are five deep strong, they're packing away over two deep boxes of honey and they're drawing out two boxes of foundation in our spring. So there's no reason why these guys shouldn't be able to at least do two boxes of drawing out, especially since we're feeding them. We're not feeding those big ones. Now, they're more established, so that's one thing. All right. Let's get into this nuke right here. This one's the bigger of the two. Okie doke. Let's get that feeder out. Now, I haven't been really good about updating you all on how long these things have been installed. I installed the packages, I believe it was April 3rd. Today is June the 7th. And we have fed them roughly, the, the nukes much less, but the packages we've probably fed about two and a half gallons max since we got them. But we have a really strong flow during um, much of April and definitely May. So, you know, there's, if I would have fed them, it would have caused them to backfill. Ooh, that one bee's not happy with me. And just because the bees have been gentle when they were little does not mean that they will remain gentle. They get older and they get a little sassy. Well, we got fruit all the way on the outer frame on this one. A lot of uh, honey right there. Now there's brood on this other side. We've got this frame drawn pretty well on that side. Pretty well drawn on that side. They're not able to forage much today and those worker bees have nothing better to do, to do than just look at me and give me all their spare time and attention. So we have this is what I want to see. This, All this you see right here, though, that's where it's been missed. There's a little nectar in some of those. And probably as they're clearing space, she's laying it up. Kind of want to watch out for that, though. Just keep a look at her pattern. But look at this. We have eggs over here. We have multiple stages of brood. Now, one thing we'll have to keep an eye on is with these nukes, I am sure the mite levels are higher than in the packages. We did treat them with oxalic acid vapor in, in winter. That's almost honey just completely on that side. But because they've been brooding longer, because these were started in September, we're gonna have to watch that. Oh, right, the bees got creative. 
Now, I see this a lot in Facebook and stuff like that. People talking about what to do in these circumstances and why they'll do that. And some people say, well, bees hate plastic foundation. That's a half-truth. There's a lot of half-truths in beekeeping, and people love throwing them around when it suits their uh, beliefs or wishes. Now, what it comes down to is, I don't care what you use. You can use, go foundationless. You can use wax foundation. You can use plastic foundation. There's right and wrong ways to do it, and no matter what you do, there are still some times when bees will get a little creative. Now, one thing I have noticed is most of the times, beekeepers don't have a good enough coat on their plastic foundation. That's the main thing, is you gotta have a nice, good, thick coat, and you have to have bees that wanna draw too, but it's gotta have a good coat on it. And sometimes you get this cheap foundation because you don't want to get the expensive stuff for the double wax or you don't wax it yourself. And yeah, you'll have more issues because it dries out over time. I don't like using wax on the, the plastic foundation that's been sitting there for more than six or so months because it, it starts drying out. Now another th reason this happens, whew, there's a lot of larvae and eggs in there. That's awesome. See all this down in here? I believe how this... Uh, this stuff starts a lot of times is where they've built burr comb on top of the frames below so maybe y'all ought to scrape that off and I probably should have as well so that they don't start that burr comb in between the frames at the bottom of those bottom bars and they start building up and that's when things start getting a little funky and I'm pretty sure that's what happened now back when I used to wire wax foundation I still had issues with that and if your bees don't use it quick enough they'll actually chew holes all the way through your wax foundation wax foundation is not perfect and foundationless I tried that out on about a thousand frames you totally can do it bees will draw in between it takes it takes someone that has a lot of patience um, also, they also produce a lot of drones in it I um, you know, don't have time to fool with foundationless. I definitely don't have time to fool with wax foundation. Um, thankfully, this plastic foundation can be used for a decade, and then you can clean it off, you can re-wax it, and use it again. And it's a really high-quality USA-made plastic, and you can recycle it if you feel like you're done with it. All right, so they've partially drawn this one, as you've seen. Now what we're going to do, we're going to clean all that burr comb up and brace comb in just a second. But I've seen the queen lay a bunch of eggs. I've seen her lay larvae. They're drawing out their combs beautifully. They're going to finish drawing this box out no problem. They've got brood over here. I can look down below and I can see that they're drawing out the, the foundations we rotated below. I'm happy with the way this looks. The queen's laying. Now, if our flow was just starting, we would have to watch for swarming, and then you'd want to be adding another super at this point. Our flow is, we're, we're going to be feeding probably in the next week. So swarming is not going to be an issue. I'm not going to be adding any supers to these. Now, I might be splitting some of these, but I'm not going to be doing anything like that. Now, I think the best way to avoid crushing bees and damaging bees many times is to shake them off. So we're just making sure the queen's not on here, and we're just going to, it's easier this way. There we go. And I'm just going to fill all that back. You try to get it down to where it's, uh, it's clean again and straight as much as possible. There's a lot of really nice eggs and larvae down in here awesome a lot of people brag about how much better swarms are I, I think most swarms are actually from other beekeepers that have purchased packages or nukes bees aren't even native to this country so people talk about how wild bees have all these superior superior characteristics well wild bees aren't even that much wild bees um, I, that sounds really dumb but they're they're mostly just uh, bees that have intermingled with uh, production bees as much as anything. Now, some of them are unique. I think it's a little overrated. I looked into that. I've tried that. I've, I've had some really bad swarms. I think the main reason swarms are so much better 
in a lot of circumstances because they are strong and they typically have well-mated queens, but there's been several swarms that I've caught that don't even have a good queen or they have high varora levels. All right, so that looks really good right there. We're going to take this frame and we're gonna put it up against a, this one over here that's pretty straight. And then we're gonna take this other side and just repeat and do the same thing. All right. Now we're just gonna take this down. Just try to get it straight. We try not to dig all the way to where you scrape the plastic off the foundation. Look how warped this frame is. This is an old Kelly frame that I purchased years ago. I bought thousands of them. I switched to Man Lake, but I still have some sitting around. So you can see the bobby pins that we used in these things to hold it in because it's not a groove top frame. It's not really meant for a plastic foundation, so we made it work. They're still using it. I just go down in there and just kind of chip away at it and try to clean it up as best you can and they'll straighten that out so we're just gonna take that and go right up against another smooth frame and that should fix it now you always can't they can't always get perfect combs and it doesn't matter what system you're using that's just the way it is bees will get creative and sometimes the damage is just too much and you'll have a bare exposed piece of plastic or something but that's okay these are fine all right so we're just gonna this one's a really good frame we are going to push these over and put this on an edge next to the feeder. Again, if you are in a season, your bees are looking like this, where you still have a lot of flow left, you need to add a super now on a colony like this. Now, if you're going mediums from here, from this point, and you were using deeps, now if you're using all mediums, that's awesome because um, you can just take a medium frame and go up and bait them up in there with a frame of brood or something and then put your excluder on and so you can still use that frame of brood to bait them up and uh, as the brood hatches out then you can either rotate that below or just leave it up there and, and that excluder will keep them but it really helps having a, a, a frame of larvae to bring up to get them to draw because if they you stick on like for me, I can't do that if I was to go to mediums with this. I stick a medium on here and they just have to go up there and draw it. I can't bait them up with a frame of larvae or even a frame with a little bit of a partial drawn foundation. So if they don't go up there and we have a flow still going on, they're just going to backfill that brood nest and the queen's going to start making a uh, laying in uh, queen cells and they're going to swarm if you don't do some preventative measures. So it just really depends on your season, what you are seeing and what you need to do. I know my season's fixing to end. So I'm just going to be um, probably starting to feed here in a week or so. We're not going to be taking any honey off of these guys. Our main goal is just to get them all healthy, and we're probably going to be splitting. I happen to know a queen producer um, by the name of Kathleen Reynolds, and you know she drives a really high price on her queens because she thinks that they're princesses. But uh, we'll just have to pay up. A little bit of ice cream goes a long way. But we're going to get some queens from her. Um, when we need them and then we're going to make some splits off of these so hey this package versus nuke challenge is is starting to increase our bee yard in the first year and we still have a lot of season left and with some appropriate feeding um, who knows how far we'll go now my biggest concern with these packages is can we even get them to draw two deeps in our season all right let's get this feeder back in here we're just going to peek just a tiny bit at the the other one over here but I think it's just going to have to be um, split down, honestly, because the last time we checked this one over here, it was just really close to being completely drawn out and plugged, and I know we've had a lot of honey come in since then. Excuse me. All right. Yeah, look at that. They're already at the top. Woo! And they don't like me either. That's why you smoke before you just yank off the lid. The bigger the colony gets, the more aggressive they typically get. Now, you want to talk about some bees that are a little bit hot. And they're really good when the honey flow's going. But when the honey flow stops and you have four or five frames of bees, four or five frames, four or five deeps of bees, um, they don't like being fooled around with very long. 
That's when the bee suits come in handy. Yeah, I mean this colony, every one of those foundations is drawn out. So what we can do to help those packages out is we can take a frame of brood, and we'll probably do that in the next package versus nuke episode when we kind of evaluate things a little bit more. And we'll probably take some bees out of this one because we don't want them to get too full and swarm on us. Either that or we'll just make a split with this one with one of those fantastic Kathleen princess queens. All right. Well, see, Daddy kind of started it because she's like, so this is a queen bee and I had some virgins. And she's like, well, so these aren't laying eggs yet? And I'm like, yeah, they're princess bees. And so she's super excited about princess bees right now because she thinks she's a princess. And she is. I mean, far be it for me to tell her that she's not. So she's, she's asking why we don't make more princess bees. And that is a really good question. We need to make more of those. All right. This one is drawing more foundation than the one on the far right, which I'm kind of surprised a little bit by, because this is the one that had the super seizure cell earlier in the season. One, two, partially drawn. One, two, three, four, five, six, partially drawn, fooling with just a tiny bit. Let's just dive right down into the next box. Now look at all these ants right here. A lot of people freak out about the ants, and now in some locations, ants are a big deal. Um, again, with ants, I find just strong colonies work really good, but we have, you know, ants here aren't a, a super big deal like they are in other places. Woo, that bee is not my buddy. Sometimes when they touch you like that, they'll mark you with a little bit of a, their pheromone. It's best to smoke your hand. At least that's what I find. All right, so looking down from below, we can see that, you know, they've partially drawn that one, partially drawn, not really that much. This is the, the frame that we lured them up with. They got a little bit of brood in that one, pretty drawn, halfway drawn on that side, barely drawn on this side. Just a, They're just touching it a little bit. That's really not what you want to see at this point, especially when your flow's coming to an end. We're going to have to start feeding these things hard. And the thing of it is, if the queen's not laying a ton, then you're just going to end up backfilling anyways. I think they're not foraging pollen very good. I don't understand why not everything else is. All right, so they've fattened this one out a little bit. <laughs> Having and hardly drawn it on this side. Goodness gracious. This is why when you, if you start buying packages and you lose packages and they don't supersede themselves or just what just whatever you can it's you can get in a rut of just buying packages year after year. That's just come on bees, draw some wax out, will you? Spotty brood. Mm -hmm. We're, I need to see frames of brood. And they just don't seem to really want to take off. Some bees are like that, and that's why you don't breed from those. And when you start raising your own queens, you can fix that. There's no young brood in this at all. There's a little bit of bee bread, which is good. No young brood in that. A good queen is going to have you know, at least seven, eight frames with brood in it. Why am I not seeing that in these packages? I'm not seeing any queen cells, so they should have a queen. A little bit of brood, mostly nectar in there. Bunch of mixture of stuff. Okay, here's a little bit more brood. I'm not seeing a lot of protein in here. We're gonna throw some pollen patties to these uh, these packages. See if that helps them out a little bit. But there's no reason. Everything else in this entire bee yard and those nukes are doing just fine. And you know they had some combs to start off with, but you can't tell me that they've produced that much more. Ooh, I got that one. 
Um, yeah, I'm seeing a little bit more brood over here, but look how spotty that is. They're back filling. Instead of back filling, they should be drawing comb out. And uh, that's, this is just not a great looking colony. Yeah. So, I mean, when I see something like this, um, I did see some young stuff, so we do have a queen in there, but it's not, there's not frames full. It should be, you know, a nice little ball of, of eggs or a ball of uh, area of larvae or something like that. I'm not seeing that. They're not drawing combs good. Healthy colonies eat a lot of feed. They draw a lot of comb. Of course, we're not needing to feed them, but nature's providing it right now. This makes me want to requeen them. The problem is, if you are not able to raise your own queens, then you end up buying queens from similar places that you don't know what you're getting. And it is amazing when you take a queen that is doing something like this and you requeen her with a good quality one, you just, the effects are nearly uh, immediate. Just within a handful of weeks, it just seems like the hive is acting very differently and that's because of the percentages. Percentages are so important. So let's just throw this one back together. Let's not go through the other uh, two colonies, but you kind of get the general idea of what we're seeing. We're starting to see a clear um, advantage with the nucleus colonies. And I really don't feel like it's because packages are worse or nukes are better. Well, so much for the video being short. I'm telling you, when it comes to bees, I could talk all day, as I'm sure you all can tell. However, I was really disappointed to see in the couple packages that we've looked at that they're just losing a percentage game, which is really important. They're just not drawing combs as well and aggressively as they should. They're not raising brood. It shouldn't be the mites at all because, one, they're young. We also took care of the mites early on in the package versus nuke challenge. I'm not seeing signs of disease in the brood. What I am seeing signs of is poor queens, and, and queens that are too inbred or that were not mated properly, um, which might mean they just didn't get mated um, by enough drones. We'll end up with a you know brood that looks like this where there's just not a lot of it And what she might be doing is she might be laying as much as our nucleus colonies are But the problem is if the larvae is too inbred or Whatever the, the bees will go around and they will cannibalize that and you're losing the percentage game So if you're losing Percentages like that and then you encounter a dearth period where the nutrition is not as good and that's going to lower the amount of brood. And then you start including a little bit of mites in there. And then the viruses get up. Fall comes around. Those packages are history. Now, bees that are a little bit stronger and have a better queen can withstand more pressures. They're still not immune, in my opinion, to varora. Already gone through that, well, uh, way too many times. Anyways, let's just end this video because you've been here for a while. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. We'll keep you updated on how things go, and if we have to, I will contact um, Kathleen to see if we can buy some replacements or something for these queens. Thanks for watching the video.